All right, so on uh, December 1st, the International Organization of Migration launched its flagship World Migration Report 2022. It reveals a dramatic increase in internal displacements due to disasters, conflict, and violence. The Director General Antonio Vitorino said, quote, we are witnessing a paradox not seen before in human history. While billions of people have been effectively grounded by COVID, tens of millions of others have been displaced within their own countries. So here is here is migration by the numbers worldwide, Yo-Yo. All right. Okay, there has been a 60% drop in 2020 to 1.8 billion people who took an airplane ride. Mm. That is down from 2019, where 4.5 billion people wow. got on an airplane in the year 2019. Now, it could be the same person twice, Obviously, the pilot's flying multiple times. Oh, okay. Obviously, Yo-Yo's flying everywhere every weekend. Mm-hmm. You're you're an international superstar. Yes. You know, so it's it may be the same person. I like how you say yes. It's like <laughs> not even you don't even you don't even blink an eye on I that mean... Yo-Yo international superstar. <laughs> and uh, but I mean, think about it. There's what? How many people in the world? Six billion, seven billion people in the world. And there's 4.5 billion people flew on an airplane in 2019, but only 1.8 billion because of COVID in 2020. Yeah. Um, according to a report, the number of international migrants has also grown from 84 million globally in 1970 to 281 million people in 2020. That means 281 million people crossed an international border and wow. moved somewhere else Wow! in the year 2020. That's a lot of people. That's a lot. Although when global population growth is factored in, the proportion of international migrants has only inched up from 2.3% to 3.6% of the world's population. So even though 281 million people pack their bags, or maybe they don't have any bags to pack and they just put their shoes on, or maybe they don't even have shoes and started walking, who knows, But uh, or got on a plane, 281 million people moved internationally, migrated in 2020, that's 3.6% of the world's population. Wow. Uh, now, most people globally, uh, 96.5% have never left the country where they were born. They still, I mean, you may have traveled to visit someplace, 96%? but 96.5% of people still live in the country where they were born. Well, uh, okay, lived in the country, lived, but lived. Not, 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 not visited. Out, I mean, out there. I'm sure they have visited, but yeah. still residing living in the country where they are born that's a lot 96 percent yeah yeah so uh that's the that's the news on migration for 2020 and uh very trifling what's going on in michigan Mm -hmm. the um the school shooter Mm -hmm. uh the parents of the school shooter uh the 15 year old boy who was accused of uh on November 30th, going on a shooting spree at Oxford High School in Michigan, mm-hmm. killed four fellow students, injuring seven others, including a teacher. The parents, Jennifer Crumbly, 45, and James, Cr- I'm sorry, Jennifer Crumbly, 43, and James Crumbly, 45, they uh, are now being held on involuntary manslaughter. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Now, the slain students were Madeline Baldwin, 17, Tate Meyer, 16 years old. Hannah St. Juliana, 14 years old, and Justin Schilling, 17 years old. And it was the deadliest shooting at a United States uh, a public school, K through 12 campus since 2018. It was the 32nd school shooting since August 1st. So for this school year, and we've only gone through half a school year so far, there's been 32 school shootings. Jeez, jeez. Now, Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald held a press conference on Friday laying out why her office is charging the parents with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. She said, quote, on November 21st, 2021, a teacher at the Oxford High School observed Ethan Crumbly searching ammunition on his cell phone during class and reported the same to school officials. Jennifer Crumbly was contacted via voicemail by school personnel regarding the son's inappropriate internet search. School personnel indicate they followed that voicemail, followed up that voicemail with an email. They did not receive any response mm. from either parent. Thereafter, Crumbly exchanged, this is the mother, exchanged text messages about the incident with her son on that day, stating, quote, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn just not to get caught. 
Oh. Now, on the morning of the school shooting, a teacher found a graphic drawing allegedly made by the shooter. His mother also reportedly texted him, Ethan, don't do it, after news of the shooting was made public. Now, the prosecutor, uh, Kara McDonald, she said, I want to be clear <clears throat> that these charges are intended to hold the individuals who contributed to this tragedy accountable and also send the message that gun owners have a responsibility. Yeah. Now, That's after, sad. Now, after charges against the parents were announced, an hours-long manhunt led to their arrest in Detroit. They're each being held on $500,000 bond. Now, prosecutors say James Crumbly, the father, he purchased the gun for the son. A Sig Sauer, a 9mm pistol, on Black Friday as an early Christmas gift for his son. Just got it the Friday after Thanksgiving. Wow. And says the Crumbly stored the gun, quote, unlocked in a drawer in their bedroom. Now, their defense lawyers say that's not true. Now, a photo of the pistol, believed to have been used in the shooting, was posted to an Instagram account days earlier that the Oakland County Sheriff's Office believes the account belongs to Ethan Crumbly. That's the son. Mm -hmm. The caption under the post read, read, just got my new beauty today, Sig Sauer, um, nine, nine millimeter. Now, school authorities twice raised concerns about Ethan Crumbly's behavior to his parents. First, a teacher from Ethan Crumbly uh, found Ethan Crumbly searching online for ammunition. The next day, there was the note on the desks. Uh, the thoughts won't stop, help me. But the Crumbly's refused to take their son home did not ask him about the gun or inform the school that they had purchased one. Now, Oxford High School's actions are also being examined because the, the school is also I, I was about to say, I feel default, like they should. Yeah, prompting questions about the school's responsibility yeah. and whether there could be legal repercussions for the principal, the vice principal, Absolutely. and other people in, in the administration. All three crumblies are in isolation and under suicide watch. Uh, investigators found two videos on Crumbly's cell phone made the night before the shooting, in which he talked about the shooting and killing students at the high school. The sheriff's lieutenant, Tim Willis, said at Crumbly's arraignment Wednesday, a journal in Crumbly's backpack detailed his, his desire to shoot up the school, including murdering students. Now, what came out in the news just recently about all of this, mm -hmm. um, right before we got on the air, is that the Crumbly's, the parents, have hired one of the most expensive lawyers um, in Michigan. I wonder how they got that the money. The defense lawyer, the defense lawyer who represented J, uh, Dr. Nasser, he was the um, the doctor who was accused at Michigan State University of sexually abusing all the gymnasts and the mm -hmm. athletes there, mm -hmm. uh, the female athletes. He eventually went to jail, but um, but now the parents are being represented by this extraordinarily high-powered attorney. The son, the 15-year-old son, he's being represented by court-appointed attorney. Wow. So, think about our last person we were just talking to, talking about. Mm -hmm. Who? Our friend who was commenting on LeBron James. We were talking oh, about Kyle it, right? Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kyle Rittenhouse was also represented by some high-powered right. attorneys. Obviously, uh, both Kyle Rittenhouse and these parents, they don't ha didn't have the money to hire these not. attorneys. This was either done by donation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even think it's crowdfunding. I think it's you know political action committees Jeez. doing this. Why both in Kyle Rittenhouse's case and the parents' case, the, probably people who are defending gun rights yeah. in the United States of America. Okay, and they're saying, we don't want to go down this slippery slope of if a parent buys a somebody or anybody buys somebody a gun that the person who buys the gun is also responsible for the actions of the person who's doing the shooting especially or, when they've been warned right That's or or if they have a suspicion that somebody is going to do something that they would be held responsible now there's a difference between a somebody and your child, right. because you have a much higher duty mm -hmm. to to do something if it's your child <clears throat> than if it's your neighbor. Right. Okay. But at the same time, there are very powerful forces in in the United States of America that don't want to see 
people such as Kyle Rittenhouse, such as the Crumblies, go to jail for having a gun or shooting people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is why the Crumblies have these high-powered attorneys, yet the son has legal aid because there's really not much. I wonder how the parents feel, though, like the fact that they there's have not, these high-powered attorneys. I understand that, but attorneys. in other words, there's not a, as much of a political um, stake in the outcome of the son. Right. The son was a disturbed school shooter. He's going to go to jail. It's not a political thing. Right. The parents, the parents becomes political. Kyle Rittenhouse was political. Mm -hmm. And certainly the parent, these parents are political mm -hmm. in the sense that, w that gun owners and people who are fierce advocates of the Second Amendment that, you know, there should be a lot of guns in America. And guess what? There are. There's more guns than people in America. No. Um, you know, it's more guns in America than probably anywhere else in the world by far. Uh, this, by the way, is the is the homepage for the gun manufacturer. Was it the Susser? Was it the the Sig Sauer? I don't even pronounce Sig Sauer. I can't even pronounce it. The Sig Sauer nine millimeter. What do you think there? What do you <clears throat> think? What is this picture promoting to a fifteen year old boy? And what kind of parents would buy right. a gun that's being marketed in this way for a 15-year-old boy and add on to it, by the way, no 15-year-old boy should have it, and add on to it a disturbed 15-year-old boy. And as a result of all of this, because this is not a gun for for fun, right. and this is not a gun for sport. This ain't no BB gun. This is not a gun... Even this is a gun to kill people. Yeah. Why is this 15 year old boy have it? A disturbed one who wants to shoot people. Yeah. Who got it and within a week killed four kids. And the parents knew he was disturbed. Even the mother texted, don't do it. Right. And they didn't keep it locked. They didn't keep, didn't do anything. But there are gun enthusiasts, gun advocates that feel like they that should. feel that. That's okay, yeah. because nobody should be prosecuted for the actions of somebody else, even if it's their son, even if they hand him the gun, even if he's a minor, even if he's disturbed. Not true. And, okay. and as a result, these parents are going to get very high-powered attorneys, just like Kyle Rittenhouse did, mm -hmm. because there was a political, it was a very politically charged situation with Kyle Rittenhouse, too. Okay, his defense was, I was defending property. Okay, I'm right. allowed to have a gun. I'm a citizen and I'm allowed to have a gun. That's what the Second Amendment is. And I'm allowed to protect myself if somebody is, is going to <clears throat> come after me or I feel my life is in danger. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse's defense was ridiculous. It was illogical. Remember we talked about it? Mm -hmm. Because the only reason he felt his life was in danger was because he thought somebody was going to overpower him, take his gun and shoot him. You're right. But then if there was no gun, then would be, there would be no reason why you would think that. But it's all, it's all political. Because they, they don't, the, they, and, you, and it's funny, whenever I... You always say, who's, I, who's they? they? But in this particular case, we don't know who they is. Right. We don't know who's funding these lawyers. But we have a good idea. People who want guns on the street. People who want ammunition on the street. I bet there's even big companies people, that, are in, people, that don't want to put their names pe out there, too. People who want, I think it's political action committees. I want people who want, who want Americans to have multiple guns and don't have a problem with the violence that comes with it. They don't have a problem with the violence that comes with this because what's more important to them mm -hmm. is that guns should be legal. And I don't know at what point that somebody says, I have a problem with the violence that guns bring into society. But there's a big group of people in America that it doesn't matter how dangerous, how many school shootings, yeah. they don't care. I know you have a lot to say on Emmett Till Ooh, investigation. Sure do. Yeah, yesterday the United States Justice Department said it is ending its investigation into the 1955 lynching of Emmett Till, the black teenager from Chicago, who was abducted, tortured, killed, after witnesses said he whistled at a white woman 
in Mississippi. Now, this happened in 1955. This didn't happen recently. Right. But it was a very, very famous, famous uh, civil rights case. And it became famous because em he was so mangled and tortured and disfigured mm -hmm. by nobody nobody was caught for doing it but we assume so no, we they know we, who uh, they know who did it they admitted oh, oh, oh they were oh it that's was, true it was, it you're, was right, the you're, right, you're right you're right you're right the, you're right you're right you're right you are right you are right husband and a brother i take it back yeah nobody was they convicted were, right okay nobody was convicted of it but two people uh these are the killers right here yeah. these two white and admitted guys to it. right and the, and they're <laughs> both dead now and they were acquitted by a white jury. I remember the story All now. male. Right, all male white jury. <laughs> and after they were acquitted, you can't have double jeopardy and come, and right. then they admitted they did it. But they 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 tortured and mangled this poor boy to such a, and, and, and to such a level that, and he became famous because Emmett Till's mother left the casket open yeah. for the world to see mm -hmm. what these two white men did to her son. Had and, the casket they, been closed, they, right. nobody would have would've, ever heard right. of Emmett Till. So years later, one person who was never who was never prosecuted was the woman, Carolyn Bryant Dunham. She is alive still. Yeah. Um, and she is in her eighties now. She is the one who told uh, told these two men that this black boy, Emmett Till, whistled at her and grabbed her ass. And uh, later, after the uh, exoneration of these two white men, which was, they did it. Right. She said, oh, I lied about it. Six decades, decades later. Right. And then she recanted and said, I didn't lie about it. Right. So the FBI, the FBI was investigating whether or not she lied to police authorities to cover up a crime because that in of itself is obstruction of justice. Right. Now, uh, the Justice Department finally released a statement saying, in closing this matter without prosecution of Carolyn Bryant Dunham, the government does not take the position that the state court testimony uh, this woman, Carolyn Dunham, gave in 1955 was truthful or accurate. Mm -hmm. There remains considerable doubt as to the credibility of her version of events, which is contradicted by others who were with Till at the time, in the, including the account of living witnesses. Uh, Till's cousin, Reverend William Parker Jr., said during a news conference in Chicago, today is a day we will never forget. For 66 years, we have suffered pain. I suffered tremendously. Now, the two white men, Roy Bryant and his half-brother, J.W. Malam, they were tried on the murder charges a month after Emmett Till was killed. But the all, as Yo-Yo said, the all-white Mississippi jury acquitted them. And months later, they confessed in a paid interview with Look Magazine. And eventually, Roy Bryant, one of the two killers, mm -hmm. married Carolyn Dunham, who six decades later said she made up the story and then recanted. Now, um, Bryant and Millam were not brought to trial again. They're both dead. Dunham has been living in Raleigh, North Carolina. In 2006, the FBI began a cold case initiative to investigate racially motivated killings from decades earlier and a federal law named after Till allows a review of killings. Uh, but eventually, they couldn't find enough evidence to <clears throat> prove that she lied. They believe she did. Most people do, but I guess they can't prove it in court. Last I mean, word, Yo-Yo. You know, at the, at this, I know you have a lot the, to say <laughs> on it, so I'm, I'm, I'm silent. I'm at, waiting right, for you. At this, point, at this point, this is what I would rather have. Let him live or uh, rest in peace um, because this 14-year-old, innocent 14-year-old child um, who obviously was... Um, innocent from what the the lady actually said and it what actually came out the mother had said that he had um like this stuttering problem so like when people stutter sometimes they'll like do something to kind of break out of that stutter so he'll like whistle and then it kind of goes straight you know and he asked he was begging his mother from in chicago to just let him stay with his cousins out in mississippi just for like the summer and she was like she 
wanted to protect him from exactly what happened. This was an innocent child who had a, it was with a single mother. I don't with think a good he whistled. Family. He certainly he didn't did whistle. He did not whistle at her. And, she, and the fact that she can come out and say, I lied, and then her family come out and say, oh, no, mm. she don't know what she's talking about. And it, like, and, you know, the case being closed, it, it's like, regardless if he did whistle or not, he did not deserve what happened to him. So I don't see how, the, you know, I'm saying there's, there's, bringing there's, this there's, up there's, again there's, ain't doing nothing but letting them, not letting him rest Well, the there was never any justice for him. At all. And there never yeah, will never be. Will so be. it's just like, let him, yeah. at least just let him rest in peace. All right. That's the only thing you can do at this point. Well, uh, our schmooze would not be complete without coronavirus, yo-yo. Oh, gosh. Yeah, less than a week <laughs> after the first case of the Omicron vi variant was confirmed in the United States, about a third of states have now reported cases, and health officials say it's continuing to spread rapidly. But now there is some news reports coming out that maybe the Omicron virus, although it's spreading rapidly, may not be as lethal as some of the earlier variants, including the Delta virus. So that may be some good news. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Fauci even came out and said, if the news continues to look this way, and you'll only know over the next couple of days and weeks to see if people are getting hospitalized. But even though a lot of people are getting sick with the Omicron, I mean, I'm maybe not pronouncing it right, uh, variant, um, there's not been an additional um, equal number of people dying or becoming severely ill. Okay. So scientists are starting to believe that the Omicron may have been a false alarm um, and that also the vaccines seem to be working well against the Omicron virus. If you're taking a vaccine not to die or be hospitalized, it's working very well. Mm -hmm. If you're taking a vaccine because you don't want a virus in your body at all, well, vaccines, the coronavirus vaccines don't necessarily work like that. They work to prevent you from getting ill enough to be hospitalized right. and seems to be working against the Omicron virus as well. Um, and meanwhile, uh, the Centers for Disease Control has shortened the testing window on all international air travelers from taking a pre-departure COVID test from three days to one. So when I go away on holiday, mm -hmm. I have to now take a COVID test 24 hours before I get on a plane, even as an American citizen, to come back to the United States. Yep. Previously, only unvaccinated travelers had to take a test no more than one day in advance of travel. Now it's everybody on the plane. I'm here for it. Uh, and the new rules affect all air passengers, two years and older. Yeah. And that, my friend, is schmooze. schmooze. I'm thirsty. We have any tea? Oh. Is there any tea anywhere? What do we have today? The tea is coming. Oh. Whoa. We have a new beautiful butler. <laughs> Why don't hey. you introduce yourself? We have a introduce new... Introduce yourself. We have a new beautiful butler. How are you? Pretty and Good. pink. <laughs> <laughs> what are you serving us today? Uh, it's pomegranate and raspberry. Pomegranate oh, and raspberry. Okay. Very nice. Real fancy. Very, uh -oh. very nice. Jay Fresh, somebody's coming for your job. Oh, boy. And it matches your, your, wow. your suit. And it's the pink and yeah, the I'll pink. Right. Very, very nice. Thank well, you. thank you very much. Thank and you so much. I appreciate it. That was, that was very, oh, oh, and a spoon. Thank you. That was very, really what like a nice it. surprise right. on who's serving us today. <laughs> thank Cheers you. Cheers very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We like this pomegranate. We, keep, we seem to be getting new teas every yes. day. This is very good. It okay, is. you guys talk amongst yourselves. We're going to have yeah. some tea. Yeah. This is really good. Mm. Excellent. Mm. Yeah, you have your finger out? Yes, of course. Yes, you do. Yes. Oh, thank you for the music. <laughs> thank you. I feel like I'm in the Buckingham Palace. That's where we're supposed to be, yes. <laughs> so what do you think of this Drake withdrawing his 2022 Grammy nomination after he got nominated? Yeah. Now, usually the way the Grammys work is, you know, you tell your record label, hey, put me up for the award or don't put me up for the award because right. you got to you gotta sign in and put yourself in to the nominating process to even mm -hmm. potentially get nominated. So his record label did it. Right. And he was nominated uh, five, five nominees, including Best Rap Album, 
for Certified Lover Boy and Best Rap Performance for Way Too Sexy featuring Future and Young Thug. And then after the nominations came out, he withdrew. Weird. That's he withdrew. Now, he's had a whole contentious thing with the Grammys. A year ago, he called them to be re replaced with something new that we can build up over time and pass on to the generations to come after it failed to recognize his peer and fellow Canadian artist The Weeknd in any of its 21, 21 categories. By the way, that was a travesty of right. Grammy justice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a travesty of justice, but certainly a travesty of Grammy justice. Grammy justice. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this was despite him having one of the top albums. So Drake wrote in his Instagram story, maybe this gives us a little, a little indication. Okay. Yeah, from last year. Not recently, but from last year. I think we should stop allowing ourselves to be shocked every year by the disconnect between impactful music and these awards and just accept that once was the highest form of recognition may no longer matter to the artist that exists now and the ones that come after. It's like a relative you keep expecting to fix up. They just won't change their ways. So he perhaps is protesting. My thing is, I understand if he is, but why even submit if you are protesting? Maybe, maybe he maybe he didn't ask. Maybe he didn't add. His record label the, like, just yeah, did it. And then he And then, and then he, when he found out, he got upset yeah. and says, we That I could see. That's what I think happened. Yeah, that's the only thing yeah. I could see. Now... Do you think he has a point? I mean, does if if the best if the best album, best song, name the category, has to be whatever is the most commercially um, popular, then the Grammy should just be a popularity award, right? Right. So I mean, the weekend was commercially popular, right? The Grammys felt it wasn't the best work. Which out there doesn't make any sense. it doesn't make sense if the world thinks it's popular right you know who are they to you know but then again there's lots of there's movies that are extraordinarily popular sell a billion dollars worth of tickets mm -hmm. they don't win an academy award for best movie which is why this all, okay. it all it comes so down to politics it, it, it's, it's just somebody's opinion yeah but it's also a pop right. it's just politics so, so as well. you know there's broadway theater that sells out and critics say this is junk and there's other broadway theater that they say is brilliant and just not as popular so you know what drake is i think what he is saying is that if the world says this is good then it should be nominated yeah and so he's saying whoever's the most popular should be nominated i mean okay, and i so think what the grammys are saying is that there's something more to it than that i don't know what it is you, I don't know. I don't know the answer, Yo-Yo. And like, no, but nobody does, which is why people get mad. Like, if The Weeknd has... Blinding Lights was named the number one Billboard song of all time. It was actually named the the greatest hit, the number one song of all time why, by Billboard. Why was it the number one song? What what made it the number one song according to Billboard? Uh, let's what was see. their it, criteria? So it, it it would have to probably be like streams. Streams, and, and right, all right, that right, stuff. right. It was it was the number one song popularly. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that make it the best? I mean, does if, popular if it popularity makes it the best? The weekend was robbed. Drake has a point. Which is why The okay. Weeknd spoke if, out about that, if, too. If it's not a popularity contest, and they're saying, what, what does the Grammy say? I wonder what the Grammy says. What goes into their determination of what the best is? The, what is the best? What is the determination? What's the secret ingredient? Politics to me. It's all politics. This is why people get mad. So if Drake is doing this, you know, out of protest, I, I just I wish think he's that he's doing it. But, I but believe the I believe the label put. My opinion right, is the right. most logical thing. The label the label put in the nomination, and he woke I, up one I morning. Agree. He's like, "I'm nominated for five Grammys. Who told you to put my nomination?" I agree. But if that's the case, then I think he should say that because yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't be here thinking. Yeah, he hasn't you know? said anything. Like. Cal uh, uh, Kaepernick didn't go out and you know went on one knee and didn't say what he was doing it for. That is you true. You feel me? 
So you got that is very true. It would true. make no sense. So if you are protesting, let us know that you are. You I, know, maybe I just, he's scared that he'll lose, you know, all kinds of deals I, for I, for standing out just like Kaepernick did. I, I don't think he's going to lose deals on the Grammys because I don't think that's as politically charged as what Kaepernick did. <clears throat> but at the same time, um, I mean, it's not even as politically charged as what Aaron Rodgers did. You know who Aaron Rodgers? No, who is that? He's the quarterback on the Green Bay Packers. He said he was immunized and he got COVID. Oh, yeah. And everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. thought immunized meant he got vaccinated. He never got vaccinated. Right. So he, he you know, he's on the all he he was almost gonna be the host of Jeopardy. He was, you know, it's not even as politically charged as that. So I don't think right. he's gonna lose anything. But it'd still be nice to know why he did it. It would be nice to know. Yeah. And and it goes back to the age old question is I mean, if if the Grammys is a popularity contest, he's right. If it's something more goes into best album, I don't know what it is, then maybe he's not right. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's, it can't just be, if, if the award goes to the, you know, whoever sold the most records, then it's not much of a, you know, I wonder who's going to win. It's you just look at who, won, who, sold, who sold the most records, who sold, who, down, who had the most downloads or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Mm hmm what are you looking up? I'm looking at like what the Grammy Awards is based on. So it's just Academy members are required to vote solely based on quality. And what does that without, mean? Without consideration for sales, chart performance, personal friendships, regional preferences, or company loyalty. Okay. So that means absolutely nothing. Right. <laughs> so okay. which is what so I'm that saying. So that <laughs> means absolutely nothing. And uh, there's, no, <laughs> there's no meaning behind the award. <laughs> So then, then Drake's right. Right. All right. There's no meaning behind it. Then that is quality. Exact, that's Come on. exactly how winners yeah. are presented with the Grammy. Right. I, I, then there's no there's no basis for it. You know, like you know, it, it could be, you know, uh, you know, they should they should be nominated based on catchiest tune, right, most right. hummable tune, right. You know, tune that, you know, is you know, I, I mean, have some categories there. You know, something that broke new ground, mm -hmm. something that was different than before. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not a musician. I don't know it's what funny it would because be. a lot of uh, award shows are actually having those categories now. Like the TikTok has right. created a whole new category for like VMAs and right. stuff like the AMAs right. for like viral songs. So do they have the anything? We'll never on, know. Do they have anything like most viral legal advice on TikTok? <laughs> Because if they have a category, listen, we'd be most, up there. For I would be up there. Most, most viral, most this viral true. legal advice. This is true. Maybe we can do it for the People's Choice Award. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think of Madonna, sixty-three years old, getting I'm, naked? I'm here for it. Madonna has always been a sex symbol, and now she's representing for older women. Who, of course, you know, I feel like it doesn't matter what your age is. If you we, feel sexy, then be sexy. She's 63 years old. These and are some of her great. Instagram posts. Looks great. Her and doctor has been toned. doing great stuff. She's toned in her fishnet stockings. 63 years old, yo-yo. There you go. All right. Pretty toned. Ha has a young, right. handsome boyfriend. You yeah. know what I mean? She's, well, she's, she's Madonna. She's Madonna. Right, you know. So, uh, but, you know, it's the Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. They have a problem with it. Not the older people. The older people Gen are... Gen Z can go... Gen Z can go. Toe. All right. So this is what some one of the Gen Zs said on on the comments on her Instagram. Madonna, hun, you're old enough to be ninety percent of Instagram's grandma. The majority of us don't want to see some nanny with her bits out. Oh gosh. And another person said, I would be so ashamed if my sixty plus mother posted pictures like these on Instagram. Ew. And another one said, Ew, grandma, put on some clothes. I bet you. That's She's rude. in better shape than some of these Gen Zs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very easy to say, go put some clothes on from behind an anonymous... They call them trigger fingers. They just trolls. They literally just troll, troll. online. And they're, yeah. most of them are just miserable at home. If she's happy, she looks good, she's representing for a, a certain age that can be confident, I say do that. I've always liked Madonna, so... I'm here for it. So meanwhile, the internet is on a mission to silence Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> All right. Uh, someone <laughs> listed as Dexter Morales oh. started a change.org petition to keep the married couple quiet. Mm. And why is Dexter doing this? <laughs> well, Dexter seems to be reason. among many online users 
who are desperate to escape the media headlines about Jada and Will's marriage. Yeah. Are you tired of hearing about them? It's not that I'm tired of it. It's just... It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's, it's a getting lot. real uncomfortable. It, it is a lot. It's getting real yeah. uncomfortable. Now, the petition was created on Thanksgiving Day, and since then, it's more than 1,900 signatures. The only words on the petition say, poor Will Smith. Yeah. But people have some very strong feelings. Uh, KW from Mission Viejo wrote, Everything I learned about this couple is against my will. Free us. <laughs> uh, another person wrote, this is Mona Lisa Mazavami. I'm sick and tired of hearing the BS that goes on in their personal lives. It's exhausting. I've muted their names everywhere and still I'm seeing them. I'm sick of this weirdness. Make it stop. The thing, the thing is, I think, I think this is the thing. So Jada has that red table talk, as you can see, and it has blown up. Like I go to Times Square and I see a big a big ad for red table talk and what it promotes is just being free being open they have a lot of celebrities come on there especially after they have any kind of scandal and they come and talk and just let it all out on the red table i think they're letting a little too much out it's too much so like over the years we've always thought about like okay we heard that will smith and jada are perfect because they have an open marriage. So that picture right there. Well, I don't know is, why perfect. Why is why are you be, perfect beca in an beca open marriage? Because it works for them, and they're able to be open. All right, and if it works for them, but I don't think being in an open marriage is but perfect. But that's your preference. That's correct. If that is their preference, because you have not heard any type of they're happy. drama with Will and Jada they're until happy. huh? They're happy. We well now that's why we that's why we now. want the petition to right. something because we don't see the happiness like Jada even said I'm gonna quote her she said um, I think you expect your partner to know what you need especially when it comes to sex it's like well if you love me you should know if you love me you should read my mind that's a huge pitfall so people are starting saying that now Will Smith doesn't uh, satisfy, satisfy her, her sexually. This is why she went with August Alsina, uh, and it by came the way, out By the way, I can't imagine many women saying say that, that about your say, husband. But now he's saying that about your husband. Your husband's Will Smith. Right. It's not like your husband's Joe Dirt. Yeah. You know? It's not like she married Joe Dirt. She married Will Smith. Yeah, I can't imagine. There's got to be almost every woman out there like, man, I would take Will Smith in a second, well, right? Well, now they're like, questions, you know, questioning it. They're like, yeah. well, is it? Because now they're, seeing, they're going back because Jada Pinkett, had always loved Tupac. Like they grew up together. So right. so her and Tupac, they're from Baltimore. They grew up together. They they had like this unconditional Gosh. unconditional yeah. love. So when she started saying that, now they're like, well, she loved Tupac more. And then Will Smith came out and said Did something they date? about Yeah, they well dated. they were best friends right, type yeah, thing, but right, right. Uh, friends you with know, benefits. They were yeah, friends. I with think benefits. it went but, down. But, but, but Will Smith started bringing up how like, you know, he felt like he J he can't he couldn't keep up with Tupac and Jada's connection, yeah. you know, so like all of it is just real cringe worthy. We don't need we don't need to know what goes on in your marriage. Meanwhile, we don't, I got to tell you, Marge Higgs says they are too much now, man. Yeah, you and see? it is cute, but nasty. Yeah. And Sharon Bartley, she's agreeing with you. Jada and Will are just not happy people. Yeah, but we didn't know this. Right. We didn't know this. And now that the world does know it, I'm sure it's taking a yeah. toll on their relationship. And, and Dawn Harry, it's like, this is just a hot mess, this whole entire thing. It, it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it's real messy. And the last word goes to uh, Dion Reed saying, is this pre-hump day? <laughs> <laughs> kind of is. Tuesday is pre-hump day. And, and by the way, Twinkle K on YouTube, going back to Madonna, uh, says that her actions are professionally aligned and mm. she's doing it for an ad or something that's going to come out. I don't know if it's, she's doing it for an ad, but she's certainly doing it for publicity. You know, it's 60, 63 years old. I mean, she's always been like this, yeah. though. She's always been like this. It's, right. it's not out of her character, so I don't understand. By the way, people... you want to know who looks amazing who? and who's 90 years old? Rita Moreno. You know who Rita Moreno no, is? who is that? A fame. She was in. She was in what she's. Re, she has a new role in the new movie West Side Story coming out. Okay. The woman is ninety years old, belting out songs. Oh wow! All right, the movie's coming out on Saturday, but she's famous Broadway actress. Oh, she's gorgeous. She and she's ninety years old. Yeah, and she is singing solo songs and belting them out. That. There you go. Wait till you see Rita Moreno in West Side Story. I watched the uh, preview. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Finally. I'm told I have to read this story. Oh, yo, yes. Yo. yes. <laughs> Seth Rogen 
has some questions for Adele. You know who Seth Rogen is, one of your favorite actors. I love Seth Rogen. Right? You, is that one of your favorite no. actors? No. But you love him. I, lo I love him. But I love not one of your movies. favorites. No. Who's your favorite? Um, you know, they go from like Halle Berry to Denzel uh -huh. Washington. Right. You know. Right. But not, I thought I you told me he was one of your favorites like, right before. No, when it comes to comedy, comedy. Yes, yes. One of your favorite comedy. Yes, absolutely. People. All right. Yes. So, Seth Rogen, one of Yo Yo's favorite leading Com yes. comedic actors. Absolutely. All right. Him and Will Ferrell. And who? <laughs> and Will, Will Ferrell. Ferrell. I like Will Ferrell. <laughs> Has some questions for Adele, or at the very least, for her marketing team. Now, the actor told Jimmy Fallon on Wednesday that when he first got an invite to the singer's CBS event one night only with uh, Adele, he was under the impression that it was a small Adele concert. Like, very intimate. Very intimate. So with that assumption in mind, Rogan and his wife, Lauren Miller, made the decision to, <laughs> quote, smoke a ton of weed right before the Adele show. But they arrived at the Los Angeles Griffith Park and saw film crews, television cranes, drones. They realized that their presumptions of an intimate show that they would just be able to enjoy, high. baked and high, was not that, but it was a whole television event. And uh, so none, nonetheless, Rogan said he still had a glimmer of hope that the event was not gonna be the spectacle that it appeared to be. And then the first person he sees as he walks in is Oprah Winfrey. And I said, oh, no, I think this is a big television special. So Rogan continued. Then me and my wife were like, okay, maybe we can slink into the background. You know, like, we'll just sit in the back and it's fine. We're not equipped mentally to deal with this right now. <laughs> They're basically high as a kite. So we go up to the desk and they give us our tickets. And the seat numbers are literally 1A and 1B, <laughs> front row. To the Adele concert, Jeez. and uh, and uh, Seth Rogen says, "Oh no, that sounds that sounds way way close." Yes. So the he's a pot entrepreneur and a uh, he owns a pot farm. Yeah, uh, he talked about how awkward he felt sitting in the front row, completely high, <laughs> baked out of his mind, right, with a camera literally pointed at his <laughs> face the entire the entire concert. The whole time, I just tried to look cool, which is not healthy thought to have. And for me and Adele, it was hard for me to look cool because I'm uncomfortable and I'm extraordinarily close to her singing. He also questioned why he scored front row seats when there were so many more famous people to be there who should be sitting where I'm sitting. And I could just feel them insulted that I had the best seat. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was in front of Drake. And there's no, it, there's no world, he says, where I should be in front of Drake at the Adele concert. Right. So he noted that Ellen DeGeneres and Chris Jenner are also seated further back than him. And he says, I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio is behind me thinking like, <laughs> did Seth Rogen write Rolling in the Deep? Is that why he is so close? <laughs> and the thing seemed to be Will DeRogan the most about his his seat at the concert, however, is that he doesn't even know Adele. So he's See, never met, met the woman. Yeah, he says, I've never met her. I don't know Adele. Adele, if you're watching this, why just sit me in the front row? <laughs> <laughs> so the special was seen by almost 10 million viewers and aired on November 14th, one night only. It was the That's most in watched entertainment special <laughs> since 2020. Seth Rogen, high as a kite. <laughs> He's in the first row on TV for the entire show. Variety reported, Rogen said, I think it's the most popular thing I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> like, there's people I know who have not watched my last five movies who've been texting me being like, you are yeah. amazing at the Adele concert. It looked incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Hilarious. So, uh, so is he a bigger star than he's given himself credit for, Yo Yo? No. Not bigger star <laughs> no. than, than Leonardo DiCaprio no. or Drake. No. Especially when it has to do with music. You yeah, got Drake he has there, nothing like, to do with it. No. So that's and that's what made it so funny to me. There was a time. <laughs> the reason why I I could relate to what happened to him once. Me and my brother and my ex girlfriend we um, were going to my cousin's confirmation, right. and we were late. So we told my mom go inside, and we were parking the car. So we're wait. When we got to the the church, we're waiting in the line, and all three of us we're wearing red. We <laughs> walked through, 
and we're walking down the aisle to be confirmed. We had no idea. We went down the wrong line. So everybody's watching us and we're walking down like, we don't know what to do. We saw the kids in front bow at the priest. So we just like bowed at the <laughs> priest. Way to go. And my cousins are pissed. You They're like, you're go. ruining our confirmation. <laughs> so I can see how he feels. I feel for Seth. I feel for him. Well, I wasn't high at the time, so that I couldn't I, even imagine where his mind <laughs> no, was I going. Mean, I mean, you could, I mean, I could totally see it. You're like, you know what? You know, I mean, I don't smoke, but you know, if you do, you're like, you know what? We're gonna go see a concert. We're gonna get high. We're gonna relax. relax we're gonna enjoy right. ourselves. Intimate. And then, right, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, like this thing's on television. <laughs> they, they got, they got me in the first row on TV for, for two hours. Like, and I'm like, I'm like baked out of my mind. I mean, oh, it's crazy. No, nah, I couldn't, I yeah. couldn't even imagine. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, well, that's our tea. I have no more tea left anyway. I uh, finished all this by the way by the way crew this was the best tea that i've that i that i've had so far oh really not only was it the best tea it was served perfect it was it was i'm sorry j rhymes uh oh <laughs> you may rhymes the mic coming j rhymes may be losing his job oh, no. thanks for watching for more bradshaw live like and subscribe to our youtube channel